morning boys and girls my name is Mr. Colbreth and I would like to introduce you to one of the earliest materials that was used to make paper called papyrus 2000 years ago papyrus is <coughs> the most popular writing material in the world today modern papyrus is used as a specialty writing material by artists and calligraphers papyrus from which we get the modern word paper is a writing material made from the papyrus plant, a reed which grows in the marshy areas around the Nile River. Papyrus is used as a writing material as early as 3000 BC in ancient Egypt and continued to be used from some extent until around to some extent until around 1100 AD. Although it was produced exclusively in Egypt where the papyrus plant grew, papyrus the writing material was exported throughout the classical world and was the most popular writing material for ancient Greeks and Romans. Papyrus sheets are made by arranging two later layers of papyrus, one on top of the other at right angles. The layers are then pressed together and the gum released by the breakdown of the cellular structure acts as a glue which binds the sheets together. In ancient times, several sheets of papyrus were joined end to end to form a roll. These rolls, get this, could be over 100 feet in length and were the more common form of papyrus in the ancient world. The ancient library of Alexander was the home of thousands of papyrus rolls containing the literary works of ancient authors. Papyrus was also the medium of, medium of the New Testament in the early centuries after the death of Jesus Christ. Christian texts were often in the form of codex rather than a roll. A codex contains several leaves bound together much like a modern book. Papyrus eventually gave way to parchment and later paper. The large plantations in Egypt <clears throat> which used to cultivate high-grade papyrus for manufactured disappeared and while papyrus also began to disappear as the climate of Egypt slowly changed. Fortunately the modern scholars fortunately for modern scholars the dry climate of Egypt uh, has preserved thousands of fragments of ancient papyrus. These fragments form the basis of the field of papyrology, the study of ancient papyrus. Papyrus texts offer scholars new literary resources as well as documents such as letters, government records, contracts, which give much insight into life in ancient Egypt. The papyrus plant <coughs> grows wild in Egypt in the marshes along the Nile River. In the ancient world, paper was made exclusively from high quality papyrus grown on plantation. As a result, <coughs> modern papyrus, which is made from wild plants, is a lower quality than of ancient papyrus. Papyrus reads, well here you have a photo of papyrus reeds growing at the University of Michigan Botanical Gardens. In ancient times, the entire plant was pulled from the root at harvest time. It is unknown at what time of the year the ancient Egyptians harvest papyrus or whether mature papyrus was preferred over young papyrus. A stalk of papyrus is clipped near the base in this photo. In ancient times, the tough outer layer would have been kept for other uses. Strips of this layer could be woven together to form all manner of useful items such as baskets or sandals. However, the only inner part of the reed is used to make writing material. Peeling the outer layer of the papyrus is a photo now in view. In this photo, you can see from left to right an unpeeled papyrus stalk complete with flour. Two peeled papyrus stalks and several strips of papyrus green out a layer. The overview shows the stalks peeled as well as unpeeled. Once the outer layer is removed, the inner part of the reed is cut into strips. No one is completely sure what method is used in ancient times. Rather than cutting the reed, as shown, shown here in this photo, some have suggested that the triangular stalk 
was peeled into strips. Cutting a papyrus reed into strips is a photo now in view. These strips once cut <coughs> should all be around the same length and thickness in order to create a consistent shape for the sheet. This is the photo now in view. Soaking the papyrus strips is important for softening the papyrus and activating the plant's natural juices, which acts as a glue to hold the strips together. In ancient times, it was thought that the mystical Nile waters were essentially to the papyrus making process, but any water will do. After they have soaked for a few days in water, a wooden rolling pin is used to drive out the water and flatten the papyrus strips. The strips of flattened soaked papyrus are laid out in two layers perpendicular to each other. This technique is absolutely essential to papyrus, making it making and is what gives papyrus its characteristics, look, and feel. Here each strip overlaps the next by one sixteenth of an inch. When the strips have all been laid out, they are covered with a sheet of linen and felt and then sandwiched between two boards in a press. The sheet will remain in the press for a few days until it is dry. The sheet is kept in a press for a few days and the felt is changed daily to aid in the drying process. When the sheet is dry, it is removed from the press. The finished sheet of the papyrus is somewhat rough. It may be burnished slightly with a stone and then it is ready to receive writing. When I was a kid, I used to play this game, Password. And the secret password is always invisible, hidden until you slid the paper into the sleeve. And then the secret word is revealed. Well, what if the secret words aren't part of a kid's board game? but instead on a crumbling ancient manuscript. Correspondent Beth Nissen caught up with investigators who are uncovering secret messages that have stayed hidden for 2,000 years. In these vaults, on these shelves, in these boxes at Oxford University, ancient clues, 2,000 years old, to a glorious human past. Wrapped in printed paper, fragments of ancient paper pieces of the DNA of Western civilization. Here's one that contains a large page of Homer's Odyssey, still with quite a bit of mud and sand clinging to it. These are only a few of the faded fragments found buried near the outskirts of what was, at around the turn from BC into AD, a mid-sized capital city in Greek-ruled Egypt, the city of Oxyrhynchus actually found buried in the Oxyrhynchus city dump in rubbish mounds. There can be more Homer, new pieces of Sophocles, Euripides, other authors who were being read in antiquity. You never really know what's going to come out of the box. Or whether what comes out of the box can be read. Abrasion, dirt, clay, silt, an awful lot can go wrong when something is buried underground for 2,000 years. Yet somehow, buried above the water tables and beneath the dry sands of Egypt for all those centuries, almost half a million of these papyri fragments survived, these pieces of ancient paper made from papyrus. Papyrus is a plant. It is a reed that grows almost exclusively along the banks of the Nile. You shave that stalk into thin strips lay them parallel to each other, lay strips running perpendicular to them. You pound it or press it such that the cell walls break down, cellulose seeps out, creating a kind of gooey natural glue that binds the strips together, which can then be um, pressed, polished, and written on. The stuff is really quite durable, in a way more durable than the paper you're used to taking notes on today. The tons of this reedy paper found at Oxyrhynchus documented the daily life of an ancient city's markets and businesses and courts. 
We have marriage contracts, divorce contracts, tax declarations, census registers, uh, hate mail, dinner invitations. We have letters home to mom. You name it, we have it on papyrus. Thousands more of the Oxyrhynchus fragments were unreadable, soiled, grimy. Because this is a rubbish dump, things get charred if, if burning waste was put on top of them or stained. Or like this fragment, which looks at first like the work of, say, Jackson Pollock of Crete. The only readable word of Greek is just visible at the very bottom. You can read Christos. Yeah, there, there's Christos. Chi Rho Sigma with the bar above it, so that's the abbreviation for Christos. You know it's a Christian text, but much of it is totally illegible. And papyrologists assume there are letters there. Papyrus was too expensive to throw away unused and often had writing on both sides. But texts like this were a tantalizing, frustrating mystery. But really, you're never going to be able to, to publish a text like this. You can look at that under the microscope as much as you like, but it's just a, a complete mess. What papyrologists really needed was this an equivalent to Superman's X-ray vision, a way to see through whatever was on the surface of papyri, ancient food stains, burn marks, mummy paint, see through to the writing underneath. As the ancient Greek scientist Archimedes is said to have said from his bath, Eureka. It's called multispectral imaging, a technology developed by NASA to see through clouds of gas in space. It was a significant step forward when a scholar at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory decided to apply the technology to texts. Ancient texts written on papyri. The project today, see if multispectral imaging can help scholars at the University of California at Berkeley read part of an account of the Trojan War by the poet Dictus of Crete. Good morning, boys and girls, and welcome to Paper Making 101. My name is Mr. Colbreth, and I will be your instructor through this 15-step process on paper making. It would be nice if this paper was green and had dollar values attached to it. However, I'm not a counterfeiter. See me off camera. But we are going to talk about some of the supplies that are necessary to make paper. First of all, in the kit that we have here, the supplies that were necessary is you have your screen, your paper maker screen, and your support screen. This screen will remain wet once we start the process. You also have your regular household iron. You have your vat. The vat is going to be used to catch your pulp uh, mixer to make paper. You have your support grid. You have your decal. And you have your Mechanica packet. Okay? So these are the ingredients necessary along with the cloth to dry, the sponge to absorb some of the water. Uh, and if I did not mention a blender, let me mention uh, the blender at this time. Our very first step involves us taking waste paper, tearing it up into small pieces, adding it to the blender coupled with four cups of water. Here we have a measuring cup, size of uh, two cups per. So we're going to pour the first cup of water in here. And then I have my good old Wright State thermos and we're going to measure that all the way out for another two cups of water. And then we're going to add these additional two cups of water to the blender. And we're going to repeat this step five times and then we're going to blend it for 10, I believe it's 10 to 30 seconds. So let's start this process now and I'll repeat it five times and I will come back to you. To put our screen support grid down. This is our screen support grid, so we're going to lower that into our vat, okay? Next thing we are going to do, we're going to place the paper making screen on the grid and we want to make sure that this screen is wet. This is critical to the process. So we're going to make sure that this is wet and then we're going to place that down and then we're going to place our deco, our wooden frame on top of the screen. Okay, so we're placing our wooden frame on top of the screen. Okay, and then we are instructed to make sure that it is agitated to pulp moving our fingers vigorously to get the fibers evenly distributed in the water. And we're instructed not to be shy. So I'm glad we're doing this on the island. And you really can't see from, from the camera angle right now, 
but this is really starting to accumulate. This is really interesting. Okay. I'm so glad we have this as a project. This is a lot of fun. Yeah. Hey, I might be making paper at home, y'all. Y'all might be coming to me instead of the U.S. Mint. Okay, so we're going to keep on doing USA that. Then. then we are instructed to keep on agitating it with our fingers. So we're going to keep on doing that to make sure that it's dipped down in the water. Okay, then we want to bring it up out of the water and you want to drain it on the far side and just keep this whole process repeated until we have accumulated enough in here okay so we're going to keep working this process until we have achieved our goal here and then we'll be right back with you thank you Okay, welcome back boys and girls. We're going to continue our process here. And what we're going to do now, we're going to lift the vat, or not the vat, but lift our mold assembly out of the water near the far side, or bring it to the far side and allow, allowing it to drain. After we have allowed it to drain, we want to make sure that all the excess water is off of that, then we're going to actually kind of do the process if you ever seen a lot of the old gold miners where they did a sifting process and they lowered uh, i guess we would say their assembly into water to distinguish what was dirt what was gold well we're going for gold paper so what we're going to do we're going to lower our mold assembly back into our vat and then we're going to slowly do the sifting process like the old gold miners okay you can see it's not totally emerged or submerged okay i do apologize but you can see paper is now beginning to form, okay? Can you see that there? Do you have a good angle on that paper? Okay, our wonderful assistants are just doing such a wonderful job. Our camera director, Alana Colbreth, and our stage director, Alyssa Colbreth, is doing a tremendous job. So I do appreciate their help, okay? All right, so we're gonna continue this until we have the consistency that we're looking for on this screen and then we're going to continue from there okay thank you and i will get back to you shortly so what we're going to do we're going to let that drain and then our instruction calls for us to lower this on the tray now once we lower this on the tray what we want to do very very carefully we want to lift up our decal okay now you want to keep in mind when you lift up your decal, a lot of your pulp is going to be attached to it. So you want to lift it up very carefully to make sure, wow, that it does separate clearly, okay? Now after this separate, I'm just sitting it there, it doesn't call for any instructions uh, specifically. Then I'm going to grab my paper making mold support screen. I just gave it an extra name. And then we're going to lay that on top of our pulp mixture on the screen, on the paper making screen, okay? And then what we're going to do with that, we're going to place sponge. our sponge, not the deck what you see in my hand, and then what we're going to begin to do is we're going to begin to remove as much of the moisture off of our paper making screen, paper making support screen, which contains our pulp and mixture, botanical mixture in between that, as we possibly can. So we're gonna start doing that right now. And then we want to rinse that out or to remove as much moisture as we want to remove the moisture. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna flip this, is what it calls for, okay? And if this falls, I'm gonna be just mortified. And then we're going to Set that down there, okay? Now, what we're gonna do then, okay, it calls for us once again to take a sponge. As you see here, we have the grade A household sponge, which is gonna be used, okay? So we're gonna take that sponge and press it. We're gonna repeat this step once again on the back side of your paper making screen to remove more moisture. And then we're going to rinse it out. As you can see, I'm still getting a little, little bit moisture and until we do that, I think it calls for us to do this two or three times, okay? Now, once we have done this two or three times, we want to carefully lift the corners of the paper making screen. Now, this is a very super delicate process. So, uh-oh, we're cooking with Crisco. And 
same principle applies if it is sticking go to another corner in that case right there we're, we're going to cover this I'm a little short here so let me see if I can do this evenly okay so I'm going to slide that up there we go okay until we have the paper covered and then we're going to move this to the ironing board uh oh I forgot about the bottom part alright so once we move this to the ironing board I don't know if you caught my mistake there but if you did don't worry about it I caught it okay once we move it to the ironing board there Okay, then we want to iron it. Now, your iron setting is to be on high with no steam. Okay, and once you start the ironing process, and once the steam begins to be removed from what uh, your cloth that you're using to dry it, uh, once the steam ceases to appear, then you are to remove both cloths from the top. Okay, you may have to repeat this several times here, okay? As you can tell, or if you can see this clearly, we still have a lot of steam uh, that's still appearing now. But then once you have completed this process, just remove your dry cloths, and then you have completed the process of making paper. So just so we can get a glimpse at this, there's still a lot of steam in here, but I don't want to run out of memory on our camera. So I want to show you this, okay? Uh, by removing just a portion of it so you can see it's still really wet now okay so we still got a good amount of drying and ironing to do okay so once again welcome to paper making 101 this has been Mr. Cold Breath I hope you enjoyed this block of instruction yeah. uh, keep this in mind okay you cannot use this paper okay for money making or anything illegal but I hope you enjoyed the whole process of paper making. Thank you, and I look forward to seeing you soon.